Yes, sir. Is that on one? Yes, sir. Do you have this? Yes, sir. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi, Mr. President. Uh, I was in the car on the way to a funeral when Fred got me about the Bobby Baker statement down there today. Our interpretation of it is that uh, it's, it's the second time that he's mentioned you now, and it's uh, a way of building up uh, importance in the circle. You can help me if you can tell me with whom the president had lunch yesterday. Okay, well, let me check. <laughs> okay, thanks. He came and asked for money. He came and asked for help, and uh, I told him that I, this was an illusion that I had all these millions, and that I had told him that he should leave in '60 when I left, and that we, he had kept telling me that Mansfield had said that he had to stay on or he would leave. It, he just had to have him, and that he had gone to Senator Kerr, and Senator Kerr had told him that he ought to stay on. I had told him he ought to leave and go on and with all these obligations to practice law if he's ever going to practice as a youngster. And when he had these financial reverses, he came to me and asked me if I could help him financially. I told him we didn't have the money, but that if I were you, I'd go see Kerr. The one thing I don't remember, I'm checking my diary, is whether I telephoned Kerr. I don't think that I did, but I know I told him to go see him. And I don't recall seeing him after that. I do recall Kerr seeing me and telling me that he was helping him and that he was going to see him all the way through it. And that uh, that's one thing that he uh, uh, felt the good Lord had done for him to help him take care of his friends and that for not to be concerned that he was going to see his whole uh, motel deal uh, taken care of. And, uh, he was going to have him down to Oklahoma and work it out with his people. And that's about all that I ever heard or knew about it. I never let him have a dime and didn't have it to let him have. But I always thought that Kerr did and knew he would because he was that type of fella. And he had on many occasions uh, uh, told me that he uh, was helping people up there and I could... Uh, specifically a lot of the individuals themselves and they weren't just one one party and uh, he, if he, if he liked you he, he went all out for you all the way and uh, he had 
He had done that over a period of many, many years, even long before I even knew it, when Mr. Everett knew him. That's where I first met him, before he ever even came here. But uh, uh, I thought it's rather proper for him to say that, but I guess that, uh, I guess he wanted to outline the, the truth. Matter of fact, they asked me to make a statement, so he did. Uh, talked to one of our friends that he thought that I was the only one knew it, and I ought to say it. We told him we couldn't do that. But uh, that is the, that is the fact, and I, you know what I think about it all along. I think he's, he's the victim of a, the most collusive conspiracy that I've known but be conducted by a man's government. That's, I've always thought that. I think a good Lord, though, good Lord will put the hex on folks that do that. And you just watch and see now if some of them don't answer. Just mark them. I said that about old Dan Moody one time. And uh, I don't think that kid or Walter Jenkins did anything that a million people didn't do or that was improper. But I think the way they put them in the light, the way they came under their acts, the way we sat around here uh, and allowed them to do it, it's, Good Lord will never forgive us for it, and I just feel ashamed. I just wish I could walk out on it. I'm so embarrassed about my government, I don't know what to do. But well, uh, it's, until it's uncovered, it's going to be uncovered, and good Lord will uncover it. This thing's not, we uh, had a little of it in the paper the other morning, you know. But there's, there's too much of this going on, and you can just see it. I can name you a dozen of them, the same thing, wherever they cross. Why, well, this is the price you pay. didn't know this till a week ago. He just called up and said he thought I ought to testify to this. Said it happened, and they did happen. And the only thing that I see, and I'm trying to check that, and I'm not good at remembering, the only flaw that I see, and I've watched it, and I've uh, uh, gone over it with the trusted counsel, and uh, uh, I, I do not remember picking up the phone, but all of my phone calls are diaries. And it should reflect it if I did call him. I don't think it did. I do remember him telling me he had, he had helped him and would help him and would see him through, period. And I think he'd have done it. It'd have been two million. What I think happened is I think he sent him out there. And I think I think what this fellow did, say, listen, you sons of bitches, uh, you uh, are doing awful well. We've been your friends. Now you be our friend. And. Uh, he sent him out there to pick up this thing, and I think he told Mr. X, Y, and Z that uh, I'm going to help you because nearly everybody went to him for help. And then I think he had a heart attack, and he committed it just like uh, a good many of them commit in every election. I'm sure that there's, there's 20 senators this last time that were told that you'll get 30, 40, 50,000, and go on, spend it, and I'll get it for you. And I think that's exactly what this fellow did. And I think that he committed himself to help the senators with this money because he was doing that, and that's where he was getting a lot of his power because damn near everyone of them were obligated to him. Uh, and uh, I just saw Jennings Randolph last night, I remember, and he made this the, the difference on one boat up there. And I thought of this because not to anything improper at all, because it wasn't, but he really helped him and helped him materially just exactly like uh, Franklin Roosevelt helped in West Virginia, too. <laughs> and uh, uh, Junior, you remember. But those things have happened. And then my judgment is the fellow got sick and never thought he was going to die. And uh, uh, he didn't make good on it. Or if he did make good, uh, he did it another way. But uh, I never thought this boy stole anything from him. And Nick told Abe, said, hey, you never make me believe it. Then he went ahead anyway, after he said he didn't believe it himself. And I, in the first place, I don't think you'd have to steal from this Kerr. He, he wasn't a fellow that uh, you had to do it for. He'd done anything he could do, short of uh, 
given up his wife and his church to help this boy. He would just done it just without any question. Because like your daddy would do anything in the world he could for me. Just anything except give up his wife or something. The second thing, he wasn't smart enough to steal from Kerr. You're not either. I think that's right on both scores. He, <coughs> he didn't have to and he wouldn't have dared. He wouldn't have dared and he, uh, it couldn't have at all. Now, Kerr paid no more attention to parties than anything. Boots Adams, uh, Phillips down there is the biggest friend he's got, and the biggest Republican, and spends money for the Republicans every year, right? And Kerr was with the Democrat. And he did the same, Kerr did the same thing in the Senate here. And he had the more influence on that side than he did on his own. Well, the, um, they, <coughs> I hope they'll have some help. I think that that's, I think that is true. I don't think they had more conception of it than you did, but I know the fellow here told me that, uh, said every time you ask him to help you, he'll take something out of the pot. <laughs> It'll be a dam or something else. But said the one thing about it, he always puts in more than he takes out. And I think that was, uh, that was the fellow, I don't, I don't imagine kids no more but uh, the thing strange to me is that they they uh, found this amount in the box is there any uh, what what's your judgment on that well I don't have it I just don't know wasn't that a surprise the opinion that some of my uh, people uh, do, that that's a pretty uh, uh, interesting point? I think it's a very interesting point. I think there are a number of interesting points. The real problem, in my mind, is uh, the way the press and all have treated the thing, why Bobby Baker is kind of synonymous with corruption. So you show a few vague transactions and deals, bunch of money, and it all gets complicated, mixed up. steal money that's in the man's box in the envelope and in the amount, isn't it? That's uh, at least a great coincidence. <laughs> okay, Padre.